Oh my god. Hi. I have to admit, learning about whistle notes is very confusing online. For an understandable reason, it's really hard to do the typical scientific investigation that we normally do for voice language pathology, and it's very hard to get someone while having a tube down their throat to be able to produce whistle notes. So it results in a lot of confusion about terminology. I mean, I've seen online terms from flute register to whistle notes to super head voice to female falsetto. And I've heard people saying it's all referring to the same thing. I've heard people saying, oh, it's, it's very, very different. So I tinkered around. Everything I do is basically more super head voice. See, there you hear a little bump. That's kind of where my upper register shifts into a super head voice. That has a different quality, but functionally, I still feel like I'm continuing in my upper register because you know normally they're the whole length of them up and down is connecting. But to get really high notes. Just a little piece of them goes back and forth. Working on my whistle day two. Again, classical coloratura, just fine. Whistle, totally different thing. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to think really over the pitch and just a lot breathier than how I would normally do it.
an old person. Ben. You know what the trick was? Spending a lot of time in my middle. This is my hypothesis. Now keep in mind, it's just from toying and tinkering myself with my own voice reading about different vocal cord functioning things out there, watching like interviews with Mariah Carey, footage of Steven Tyler's vocal cords, and putting together what I think are some clues. Essentially, you know, to produce high notes, your cords usually get thinner and are vibrating on, on less and less surface to create a higher and higher pitch. It's kind of like how the higher strings on a guitar are the small, thin strings, not the thick string. That's physics. How do you produce super, super high, thin edges? Well, in the Steven Tyler video of him singing Dream On, you see his two vocal folds. Most of it stays together, like fully connected, and just the tiny little bit at the top is moving. But like, so he's not even moving his full vocal cords, he's just moving a little bit of them. But that doesn't really have the breathy sound typical of a whistle. That is, it sounds much more kind of like a full falsetto. That's usually how me as an opera singer and how I think other opera singers who sing above high C but in fairly full voice, I think that's prob most likely more the technique being used. For me, around uh, E flat six, E six, which is the E above high C, that's usually where I have another register shift as they call it. I can feel a slight difference in how my voice is producing sound. However, overall, I try to maintain a very unified sound between the registers. The little bit we have been available to investigate and record whistle note head voices, we notice a portion of the chords just staying open. So my hypothesis is that in true whistle, whatever that means, your vocal, the part of your vocal cords that is not vibrating stays open instead, is more to kind of allow that airy production. The, the thing they share in common, which makes sense, they would if you're producing certain pitches, there's gonna have to be certain physical aspects in common, is that you're only vibrating a portion of your vocal cords, not the whole chord. There is also something called 
hyperfunction in vocal cords and muscle dysphonia. Muscle dysphonia typically refers to when the muscles are not working in typical coordination with each other in your vocal cords. This actually helps a lot of singers produce that breathy pop sound that can make them long careers. So I'm not knocking any technique. If your voice is healthy and you love it and it gives you the career you want, that's your choice with your voice. But essentially, you're kind of holding your cords just a little bit apart while you phonate in order to create this kind of breathy, this beautiful breathy sound. That is a foundation of muscle dysphonia. Often when you have some kind of muscle dysphonia or muscle vocal cord uh, dysfunction, I guess, you can have hyperfunction in your vocal folds and your muscles to compensate. So for instance, in one of Mariah Carey's videos when she talks about uh, losing her voice as a child and being sick and then speaking in a super high voice to kind of compensate for that, that's actually a thing. Well, some people call it obligatory or obligatorio falsetto. If there's chords that are having trouble phonating, maybe they're loose and floppy or something, your um, cricothyroid muscle, which is largely responsible for high notes and actually is supported by a laryngeal nerve that is separate of the nerves that often support your voice box. So you can still produce high sounds even if you have sometimes nerve damage or muscle damage to the actual vocal box because it's kind of supported by a secondary source. Your vocal cords will tighten to produce a higher sound so you can have any voice. So you can produce sound whereas otherwise you would be unable to. So my hypothesis is that largely whistle is essentially a hyperfunction because my experimenting with whistle versus super head voice versus whatever, super head voice felt more in line with the same technique I used for the rest of my voice. Whistle felt more like an entirely separate technique which sounds weird but it sounds like I was just linking to incredibly separate voices. And so that kind of lends to this idea, I think, that you're just essentially learning to harness a hyperfunction. Now, hyperfunction can also, it can refer to a lot of things. It could also refer to the false vocal folds, which are two folds you have kind of above your vocal folds. Um, it can also refer to them producing sound together. So I'm not entirely sure what and where the whistle comes from, but I think... If I had to guess, I would link it to hyperfunction of the vocal cords. And judging by her stories and the fact that I've seen a lot of singers online have their highest high notes on whistle on days when their voice is otherwise dry or scratchy or feels not super able to produce great quality sound, and yet their whistles are stronger than ever, that to me suggests that it's a vocal hyperfunction. Just really well controlled that allows them to compensate and produce pitches at very higher sounds with with minimal tension so again live your life do your things if you are a regular or classical singer who needs to produce a fully adducted sound where your vocal cords are connecting i would minimize your whistle practice it's going to create physical memory that is not the same as regular vocal production and that could slow you down in learning how to really build a, a full range in a more typical phonating way. If that is your voice, you're living a more breathy, pop, modern, contemporary, whistle note life, then of course you can you know, enjoy safely spending time with you and a trusted vocal coach on your whistle notes. You're putting the muscles through something that's confusing them and so your voice compensates and hypercorrects for that, often hypercorrecting in a way that requires and, and, and or produces higher pitches.